So what we have here is um, an example model in ARCHICAD. This actually contains quite a bit of information and that's a combination of graphical and non-graphical data. During this section of the presentation I'm going to be concentrating on the non-graphical data and how that can be stored within the model. So in ARCHICAD we've got different types of data and different places that this data can be stored. Um, so what we'll do is we'll have a look at some of these elements within the model, such as uh, these blinds. These have been provided by a manufacturer, and by looking at the settings for this particular object, we can look at how this can be uh, added throughout the process. First of all, we've got the overall dimensions, so this would be defined very early on. But then we get more specific settings later on, in this particular case, information that can relate to uh, the fixing locations um, and the controls for these blinds. So during installation, where the, the fixings and uh, types of controls will be installed. And this forms part of the object's parameters. We've also got further element properties that can be defined. So any element can have these element properties that can be added to them. Um, and this can be created on the fly as you need to add this data later on throughout the design process. And towards the bottom we've got the IFC properties. So this is where that data can be communicated between uh, different models creating the federated model and we can control what information is imported and exported from this model. Once we've defined this information, that feeds through into the schedules. So these schedules let us display the well, graphical and non-graphical information and we can decide what information is required in that particular schedule and what format that's created in. In this particular example here we've got a list of all of the doors within the project, the IDs of each of those elements, the unique ID, the dimensions and the fire ratings and also the quantity of those elements. This is actually um, there's a two-way connection between these uh, elements in the schedule and the live model. For example, if we select any of these elements on the schedule, we can see exactly which element that relates to in the, in the physical model, either in 2D or in 3D. And that lets us instantly go back and make any changes to that particular element as we need to. We can also change information in the schedule itself, whether that's for a single item, such as this door, or we could change the fire rating in this case for all three of this door type within this model. This schedule here, again, lists all of the doors within this particular project. This time we're looking at it in a bit of a different way, so we don't have the graphical um, representation, but we do have additional information that's being displayed for where this particular door is displayed within the project, which story it's on, which space or zone, uh, and also information relating to the acoustic values and new values where they've been completed. This schedule here displays each of the window types within the project and the quantities of those. Information on the particular rooms or spaces within the building, broken down by area, um, the total area per story and the overall uh, floor plan area for the entire project. Schedules that relate to the sanitary work in this project. Uh, in this case we've got the, the costings that have been input into the model. Or again a different way of presenting that information by story. Um, so each element type by story and then the totals of those and information on the blinds which we looked at a moment ago. So this schedule here lists the uh, blinds by the product type, then by the dimensions, and then it gives us information on the installation, uh, which can be useful uh, during installation within this project. And this last schedule here um, displays slightly different information on these elements. This time we have some information that has not yet been defined and that's to be filled out during stage six. 
so that we can put the installation dates and warranty information in, the, in there. And another way that we can control this information um, is by using spreadsheets. So instead of having to go back to the authoring tool, Archicad in this case, to complete the information, what we can actually do is export a spreadsheet containing all of these fields. This is that spreadsheet in Excel. And we can complete that information in Excel, um, either information during the installation or information that's provided by the manufacturer. And that can be then imported back into Archicad. So back into the interoperability menu, and we can import that data directly back. Archicad's here, here Archicad has um, highlighted that this information could be imported into those objects element properties. So in this case, we've got the installation date, the warranty information, and the expiry date of the warranty. And as soon as we hit import, that's completed all of that information in the schedule. And we can see that also if we select that element and view it in 3D, the information has now been completed in the object element properties. Okay, once we've got that relevant information in the model, we can export that um, in various ways. One way that we can export that is to BIMX, which is our mobile app. So I'm just going to move across to the iPad. So hopefully on your screens now you, sh you should see the same project, but we're looking at it in BIMX on the iPad. BIMX contains again graphical and non-graphical data. So we can see the 3D model. We can navigate around that model and there's, um, during our earlier Lunch and Learn webinars, you can watch information, you can watch a demonstration on BIMX, but it also contains the non-graphical information or the information that we've decided should be tagged against the model when we're viewing it back on the iPad when this is being provided to other stakeholders. In this particular case here, this blind has got information on the unique ID that's been tagged against it, the dimensions, the manufacturer, product references, and towards the bottom we can see the information that's been input through the Excel spreadsheet, the installation date and warranty dates, and also the URL, so we can input information uh, to go directly to the manufacturer's website and link to external information that we don't necessarily want to contain within the BIM model.